Hey guys, Madison here. Welcome back for another Film Friday. Today is the last Film Friday before Valentine's Day, so I want to say a happy early Valentine's Day to everyone. And also, for those out there who are like me, happy Single Awareness Day. Singles Awareness Day? You get the idea. <laughs> Also, before I get started, I wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who has pre-ordered my debut novel, Gone Outlaw. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to every single one of you. If you don't know what that is, Gone Outlaw is my debut novel. It's a western. It's a romance. Check it out. There's a link in the description below that will take you to the Amazon pre-order page where you can read the plot summary and find out what the story is all about. So. With that said, uh, this week I am watching Sleepless in Seattle. The poll was romance themed since it was the last movie before Valentine's Day. I wanted to do a romance. So Sleepless in Seattle is starring Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, both of whom I really, really enjoy. I love You've Got Mail, so I'm very excited to see those two on the screen again together this week. I've just never gotten the opportunity to sit down and watch this movie, so. Um, I don't even know the premise, so I'm going in totally blind here and I'm really excited. It's a gloomy, foggy, rainy day here, um, so perfect for Seattle, I feel like. <laughs> Alright guys, uh, without further ado, let's jump in and let's check out Sleepless in Seattle. Mommy got sick, and it happened just like that. There's nothing anybody could do was not the opening I expected. Five minutes in the microwave, any one of them, five minutes in, done. Ready to eat. Hug a friend, hug a shrink, or work. Work hard, work will save you. Work is the only thing that will see you through this. Don't mind him, he's just a guy who's lost his wife. Take a couple of weeks off, get some sun, take Jonah fishing. Where are you gonna go? I was thinking about Seattle. You'll meet someone. Right, right. Sam, so I'm sorry. She didn't sorry. mean that. I know, I know. Look, it just doesn't happen twice. Yeah, I feel like that's the wrong thing to say to someone right after they've lost their husband or wife. Oh, you'll meet someone. You'll, <laughs> you'll find someone else. It's like, okay, slow down. <laughs> So I saw that it said Nora Ephron, I guess that's how you say it at the beginning. She also did when Harry met Sally, right? And when you and you've got mail, I think. Pretty sure. No It's the Casablanca song. The tall one with red hair is your cousin Irene. You recognize her by the disappointed look on her face. I was married to Harold. Your uncle Milton lost all of his money. And some other people in a pyramid scheme. Walter and I are engaged. <laughs> yeah, that ain't gonna work out. <laughs> because clearly she is destined to be with Tom Hanks. <laughs> Your mother and I had salmon at our wedding, and I really think that a wedding without cold salmon is... I'm not allergic to salmon. You never know. Harold wasn't always allergic to bees. Uh, Walter, what about Harold and bees? I'm allergic to bees. <laughs> I'm afraid I am allergic to strawberries. Allergic to strawberries. To my kid sister. Hey, he's Water from Fraser. And my baby. And then one day, we both ordered sandwiches from the same place, and he got my lettuce and tomato on whole wheat, which of course he was allergic to. How amazing. It is, isn't it? I was in Atlantic City with my family. Cliff was a waiter. At one point, I looked down and I couldn't tell which fingers were his and which were mine. I knew we'd be together forever, and that everything would be wonderful, just the way you feel about Walter. Walter. Or does she? Of... Did anyone ever call you anything other than Walter? Nope. Huh. Not even when you were young? Nope. She doesn't like his name all of a sudden. <laughs> no, no, don't wait, Walter. Really, it's silly. You go ahead. We're late anyway. I'll be 10 minutes behind you. Doubt setting in. Cold yeah, feet. The snow is falling and friends are calling. It's Turn the radio me. station. The number in Chicago. The subject of this evening's medical update is you and your spleen. And your host is Not Dr. on your life. <laughs> Coming up, jingle bells backwards. What? Seattle, go ahead. Hey, how come you're up so late? It's not that late in Seattle. It's from my dad. I think he needs a new wife. It's his son. She died. Oh, I'm so oh. sorry to hear that. Well, 
when he realizes how concerned you are about him. Oh, run a bet. Okay, but if I get yelled at, I'm never going to listen to your show again. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. Oh, no. Is someone on the phone for you? Hello? Hello, Sam. This is Dr. Marsha Fieldstone on Network America. You are on the air. You called a radio station? <laughs> Sam. And I thought maybe you and I could talk. It would make Jonah feel a little better. In front of thousands of people who are listening. Have you had any relationships since? No. It's only been a year and a half, lady. I have no doubt that you're a wonderful father. He doesn't sleep at all. How do you know that? I live here, Dad. She made everything beautiful. And it's it's just tough this this time of year. I mean. Well, this is really fun and helpful. You know, maybe I'll just hustle myself out to Seattle, give him a little gift for New Year's Eve. Yeah, you go on out there if you want to. Yes, I would just like to know where I could get this man's address. Hmm, trying to get in line. Do you think that there's someone out there you could love as much as your wife? Tell me what was so special about your wife. Well, how long is your program? And to all my listeners, a magical and merry Christmas. And to you... She's like, I don't feel the magic with Walter. <laughs> Pretty boot. It's not just about soup. Do it. What else? Her hair is Z. perfect. Please don't make hair goals. Nice. Listen to this. Darwin says that his dad needs a new wife. 2,000 women called the station asking for the guy's number. I was listening to him talk about how much he loved his wife, and suddenly I was crying. I'll tell you what it is. 2,000 women calling a radio station for a husband. There are a lot of desperate women I out there looking for love. I recognize him from Everybody Loves Raymond. Age. If someone is a widower, why do they say that he was widowed? Why don't they say he was widowered? Please, Becky, I'm madly in love with Walter. He did the craziest thing the other night. What was that? <laughs> Valentine's Day weekend. Walter, I'd love to. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jordan, wake up, wake up, man, the ball's crap. Mm -hmm. Howard. Good night, Howard. Paradise where roses grew. Can I have half your beer? Though I dream Sure, go ahead. Oh, babe. I miss you so much, it hurts. It's so nice when a man can express his feelings. Wish I could express my feelings. Yeah, so Claire, is there a problem? Um I was She's divorced, we don't want to redo the cabinets, and you need a wife. What do they call that when, when everything intersects? The Bermuda Triangle. Sleepless in Seattle, care of Dr. Marcia Fieldston. If you're having <laughs> trouble sleeping, you might want to try drinking a glass of water from the other side. She's willing to fly anywhere. Well, she looks like my third grade teacher. I hated my third grade teacher. Wait a minute. She is my third grade teacher. <laughs> to get a new wife, I guess she has sex with her, huh? In movies, women are always scratching up the men's back and screaming and stuff when they're having sex. How do you know this? This kid is way too young to know about this stuff. When the sun is now she's sleepless. I won't have to remind myself to get out of bed in the morning and bring it out. And I knew it. And I knew it the very first time I touched her. Magic. She's like, here I go again. Well, I think I'm going crazy, Dennis. I really do. Are you happily married? What? When you're attracted to someone, it just means that your subconscious is attracted to their subconscious, subconsciously. I am having all of these fantasies about some man I have never even met who lives in Seattle. I mean, you, can, you can't even turn on the news nowadays without hearing about how some babe thought some guy's butt was cute. So has my butt. Not bad. I don't think I could let a woman pay for dinner. Great. They'll throw a parade in your honor. You'll be man of the year in Seattle Magazine. Jonah? Hi, Dad. This is Jessica. Well, it's nice to meet you, Jessica. Dad, could you shut the door? Sure. I'd be like, no, kid. You can leave the door open. <laughs> this is uh, Sam Baldwin. I don't know if you remember me, but... Oh, Friday would be great. Yeah, yeah. How? I I hear that's a good place. This lady is prepared. Okay, I'll meet you there. Okay, all right. 
It's like she was waiting by the phone and had already planned this out. <laughs> you could hardly get a word in. You fell in love with the tree man? I did not say love. Did I say love? Later in the day, this is my favorite part. Winter must be cold for those with no warm memories. It was sinking. What was? A house. There was water coming in all the windows. Oh. I'm starting to forget her. Whoa, I understand. Like straight up stalking. <laughs> yeah, she needs a photo. I mean, she's gotta make sure he's hot first. <laughs> All right. Where is Seattle? Right. Between here and there. Now that's a sign. I'm out of here. I'll have a white wine spritzer. Yeah. And you, sir? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Hi. Hi. You, you look good. You look good yourself. Excuse me, Mr. Bolden. <gasps> yes, there's a phone call for you. Hello. Dad, can we go to New York City for Valentine's Day? If we book now, we can get an excursion fare. Jessica's parents are travel agents, and Jessica says... I'm not going to have this conversation right now. You go to bed. <laughs> you want mine? <laughs> She's laughing too much. Oh, it's the background check. Why is she bringing those groceries? She's gonna cook something for us, so be prepared. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. You are so funny. <laughs> we just flipped the house around and everything on. Jonah's like, no, this is not my future. <laughs> Well, hey, 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 don't you want to thank Victoria for this delicious dinner? Thanks for dinner. I never saw anybody cook potatoes that way. <laughs> <laughs> Does she ever stop cackling? Good lord. <sighs> oh, no. Oh. Oh. Turn on your radio. What? The kid is on. You've got oh. me listening to this garbage. Are you spying <gasps> on your father? Who's he kissing right this minute? Shh, listen to this. To make them stop. That's not true. Okay, now think. Shouldn't your father be the judge of whether someone is right or wrong for him? Tomorrow morning, when you're sitting down to breakfast with your dad, tell him how you feel. <laughs> Becky heard this guy on the radio. She was sure it was Rick. She was completely hysterical. And then it turned out the guy lived in um, Duluth. Just break up with him, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Quit stringing him along. I love this letter. Couldn't you do a phone interview? Not for the kind of piece I want to do. This is Captain Browning, and we're at our cruising altitude of approximately 35,000 feet. Thanks for bringing me out here. Oh, well, he likes the planes. Bye, Jonah. Bye. There's no such thing as a perfect... The angels singing. <laughs> Back roads. Not good to be doing that while you're driving. You have a wreck before she gets there. Just get out and wave and he'll stop. <laughs> Never end. This is where I belong. Just the sound of your voice. Watch him play with his son at the beach. I'm going back over there tomorrow and talk to him. I am. Better hurry up before Victoria comes back. Go, go. No. Ugh. That's not Victoria. No, go over there. It's not his girlfriend. <laughs> Hello. Get out of the road. 
food. So then what happened? So then I left, obviously. She left? He saw me. You were face to face. He said hello. Guys. He said hello, and what did you say? Hello. It's a sign. <laughs> it's a sign. Huh? That's exactly what she looks like. This is a picture of someone's back. Well, it's her, and he was crazy about her. Becky. So I mailed your letter. We're very excited about meeting you in New York on Valentine's Day and seeing if we are M-F-E-O. Made for each other. Made for each other. <laughs> it's cute. You saw her in the airport and then here? And I tried to talk to her. It was like I knew her. You don't like Victoria? She laughs like a hyena. <laughs> Is this true? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. I'm telling them you're 12 so you can fly in a company and the stewardess won't carry you around and stuff like that. Who'd believe I'm 12? If it's in the computer, they believe anything. Yeah, that's a great idea. Sometimes. That literally looks just like them on the, on the heart. That's weird. <laughs> Give them a Sleepless in Seattle is history. It's hard to understand. I thought it was too perfect, you know? I started to wonder if we were the human equivalent of two rights making a wrong. <sighs> Starting to sweat, guys, like there's not much time left. <laughs> Walter. You see what I mean? There are people who would like a relationship to be full of surprises, but I am not one of those people. I'm going with Victoria, yes. And don't try anything tricky, understand? Is this about that woman in Baltimore? Annie. I'll tell you what I'm doing this weekend. I'm getting laid. How long have you been standing there? Forever. What did you hear me just say? Six girls in college, maybe seven. There is no way that we are going on a plane to meet some woman who could be a crazy, sick lunatic. I'm not leaving till you say yes. <laughs> I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! <sighs> He's not there. All right, Jonah, listen, I gotta go. Yeah. Jonah! Tell us where he is, right this minute. That's N.W. New York. He's on his way to New York. <laughs> now he's like home alone, except it. Oh yeah, home alone, lost in New York. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> State building. Get a little further away from the curb next time, Mac. I'm going to meet my new mother. He's so confident. I mean, Sam is right. He could be a crazy lady. <laughs> I'm Jonah. Are you Annie? No, I'm Cynthia. Whoosh. Beautiful view, isn't it? Welcome. So he could be on top of the Empire State Building now. No, I can't do this. Marriage is hard enough without bringing such low expectations into it, <laughs> isn't it? What a great guy. What a great guy this man is. <laughs> what? Look. It's a sign. Shut up! Dad! Shut up! Ah! What, 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 what have I done? Huh? You are my family. You're all I've got. I thought you'd be here. Hurry up! We're closing up. No more runs tonight. Can I 
just take a look? There's someone I was supposed to meet. He's probably not there, but if I don't at least look, I'll always wonder about it. Hey, maybe when we get home, we'll get a dog. Okay. What do you mean, okay? She better not step off that other one. I'm sorry, ma'am. Empty. I'm in agony. Did he leave his backpack? He left his backpack. They're gonna come back for it. I left her by the telescopes. You. It's me. I saw you in the street. Are you Annie? Yes. You're Annie? This must be yours. And who's this? Howard. Oh, Howard. Hello, Howard. <coughs> we better go. Shall we? The magic hand touch. <laughs> it's so important to make someone happy. Make just one, one. It's nice to meet you. Smile that cheers you. If you win a turn, build your world around her. Maybe. Oh, that was great. I love that. I love that so much. That was wild, honestly, because that was so not what I was expecting at all. You know, coming from like, you've got male kind of mentality. It was just, I mean, they didn't even cross paths until like over an hour into the movie. Crazy, I would have never expected that. Usually they meet like kind of right off the bat and they had there's some contention there There's reasons they don't get together until later in the movie, right? But here it's like she falls in love with him hearing him on the radio <laughs> I just the whole premise. I did not even know the whole premise or anything about this and it was just Very unique not what I was expecting um, And crazy that like they don't really meet, really even talk until the literal end of the movie. It's crazy. Crazy. I mean, it's funny to think about it. it like, <laughs> the, the Fatal Attraction mentioned what was funny. I haven't actually seen that movie, but I, I know the general idea of what it is. Um, and having that mentioned is funny because it's so true. Like, this could very easily have turned into like, misery where it's like I'm your number one fan we're meant to be together <laughs> you know like it could have so easily been like a horror movie where she's some creep you know trying to get to this guy um and it turns into you know a scary movie instead of a romantic comedy but um of course we know it's not that because we have Annie's side of the story oh my gosh her name is Annie like in misery <laughs> We have Annie's side of the story, so we know she's not a creep. She's just someone who's not content in her current relationship, and she's looking for that magic moment. Um, and somehow she just knows she's meant to be with this man she heard on the radio, which it's, I mean, it's funny. It's outlandish. It's kind of like a, a fangirl story, except Sam's not a celebrity. He's just a normal guy. But it would be like a, a fangirl, you know, seeing a celebrity on a show or something and like find him, track him down and figure out where he's going to be so she can meet him, you know? It sounds creepy when you say it like that. <laughs> but this movie was really sweet and wholesome. Um, and again, you have to just, you have to just take it. Like the, the feeling, the sentiment, the magic is what makes the plot go because it's her being convinced she's meant to be with this random guy she heard on the radio. Jonah is somehow convinced by this one letter when he, they, he got hundreds of letters, you know, he's convinced by this one letter that this is the lady there's, you know, his father is supposed to be with. 
Um, I, you know, I just really enjoyed it. It's kind of a wacky premise, kind of a wacky story, but it was so sweet and wholesome and funny that I, I don't care about the wackiness of it. I really enjoyed it. Um, and Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan are just, they have such great chemistry, although they were hardly on screen together. <laughs> I know what great chemistry they have from having seen You've Got Mail. Um, Gosh, right now I'm looking at the like the synopsis on Amazon Prime, and I'm so glad I didn't read it because, wow, so many spoilers. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't read any of that, and I just got to be surprised by everything. But yeah, again, Nora Ephron, I'm pretty sure she was the screenwriter on You Got Mail and uh, When Harry Met Sally. I'm pretty sure I recognize the flair, the vibe, and they're just like, yeah, she she did all of these best rom-coms, didn't she? And they just don't make them like that anymore. There was just a unique vibe to these that I just don't see anymore in today's rom-coms. I just really enjoyed it. It was really, really wonderful and romantic. Um, I felt really bad for Walter, honestly, because he was such a nice guy. He was a decent guy, and usually in the, the chick flick movies, it's like the, the the female protagonist is with a guy and he's a jerk, he's all about work and there's not any real love or chemistry there, it's all just kind of surface level and he, it's usually, you know, they try to make us not like him, right? He's a, just kind of blah. Um, and he doesn't really love her the way the, the male lead does, who's gonna come along later. That's normally how it goes. But Walter was just a really nice guy. <laughs> he was just a really nice guy with allergies. I mean, and he really, I think he really loved her. You know, he was ready to do life with her, but she just was not feeling the same way. And he took it so well after everything, like being strung along so long and he gets the ring and all of that and she kind of does that sort of last minute, um, not last minute because it's not like they're getting married, but um, carried it on so far before she finally said, I'm not feeling it. And he took it so well and made a great point, like no one should be the person that someone else is settling for. If you feel like someone is settling for you and they're like giving you the vibe like, could do better, but I'll settle for you. You know, you're kind of my second choice, but if I could have this other person, no. No, no, no. Never be the person someone else is settling for, and don't be the person settling for someone else. No settling. <laughs> it's either the person for you or it's not. If you feel like it's not right, feel like, you know, I'm settling for this person, I'm not really I don't truly love this person, but they'll do. No, that's not the right person. <laughs> so yeah, all that to say, I, I just really enjoyed it and uh, fun, fun rom-com and perfect Valentine's movie. I had no idea, obviously, about the them like getting together, finally meeting on Valentine's Day in the Empire State Building in the heart and all of that. It was great. Perfect Valentine's movie. So. Thank you so much to everyone who voted for it on the poll. I hope you all enjoyed this reaction. If you want to see the full-length reaction, you can head on over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash madisonkteams, and you can see that there, as well as all of my other full-length reactions. Thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you again next week for another Film Friday. Bye, guys.